Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. This is Whiskey, and we are drinking said Whiskey's Doers. Doers 12 year old by John Cheek. John Cheek, you magnificent bastard. Fight. Now, we've had several Doers. We've had Doers, we've had the, the White Label. The White Label, we've had the 18. This is the 12 year old. Okay, right on. Right on. It went by a different name for a long time, but this is now considered the true Scotch ancestor aged 12 years. And they do by, as they. By the bottle, it's yeah, considered that. They create a blend with grain and malt, mm -hmm. and then they let it marry in casks for six months. Six months, no, why? Another six months to just coalesce into one flavor now, before they bottle it. Because this is a thing, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't know this when I was first getting into whiskey. Marrying casks. Marrying casks. You can't just blend things together and that's, it is what it is. It's yeah. never going to change. It takes a while for things to change. We had a blend that we created for the Texas Whiskey Association and uh, we got we got it to where we were totally in love with it and uh, after a two hour session of working on it. Right. And everybody was like, yes, good. That's the one. Right. We put it, I filled a whole bottle with the those measurements, tested it. It's perfect. Sat in a bottle. Three weeks later, came back to that bottle, and I went, "Oh no!" And then I, that same hour, I got a text from one of the other guys going, "Hey, have you tried that blend recently?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, I just did." He's like, "The rye took over." Oh. I'm like, "Yes." Oh, everything we loved about the mid palate vanished, and the rye took over. Yeah. It took that long for that blending to, to marry into itself, well, and it totally changed. What well, was surprising? We'll get to the doers. Don't worry. <laughs> Let's get, let's just get, it's a big I just love the process. Yeah, yeah. I was about to just dive deep into blending. Mm -hmm. We'll do an episode on the other channel about that someday. Doers, though, this is a big brand that's been oh, a while. It's got honey and, and a butterscotch. And I'm malt, yes. Butterscotch on that nose. And the malty grain. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. The malt. It really is like Werther's original butterscotch. Yeah. It's a butterscotch and malty heavy. And then the tiny. Yeah. Well, I was funk. It was going to be like kind of a, a, a greenhouse floral note. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's mild. There's a little ashy note in the end. It's really a. It's like it's very mild. It's but it is a slight ash. That's it. Almost uh, finishing with a thick layer of dark fruit. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't get really vibrant and heavy, heavily rich, which is not a word at all. <laughs> it no. doesn't get thick with those flavors, but uh, they're not thin either. It's a really nice, um, even-handed presentation. Of some really nice, yeah. I actually really like that. Here's uh, the classic doers. Okay. Oh, we're already we're already comparing. Well, like I just white label. I'm coming back to I'm getting some citrus notes for the first time. There's more uh, more character in this twelve than the white label for sure. You can even see a tiny. Uh, Which yeah, uh, you I can't may count be on that because coloring. I'm, I may be imagining the color difference. They might very, also be very using food coloring. Yeah, but I think if somebody's gonna do, if they're gonna do the E150 route, surely they would do enough to make it matter, right? That I don't know, man. It could be lighter than this. That's normally. such a light whiskey already, though. Mm. There's a little more ashiness to the white label. Mm. So this is a. I'm gonna oh. use the word. It's a smooth whiskey. It's a smooth whiskey. Yeah. This is. A, there's less ashy notes to the 12. It's a little more honeyed at the end. So as this ends a little bit thin and brittle and ashy, yeah. this one ends a little more honey. Yeah, the, the, ash. the layers of butterscotch Dude, that's and, a reasonable budget. and a sweet maltiness, those layers are nice. They're a healthy dose yeah. of those layers. I would keep that as a refill at the table when all the fancy whiskeys are over with. Yeah. Uh, somebody made uh, recently made a comment. I'll, um, it's on our other channel. I'll find the name. Whenever we eventually do an episode about right, mm -hmm. how people that are deep into the whiskey scene and they're an enthusiast, it's their main hobby, perhaps they do a review show on the interwebs. Mm -hmm. How quickly their palate moves away from mass market preferences mm -hmm. because they acclimate to the alcohol. And the comment was on the Whiskey Tribe channel. I'll, whenever we do an episode there, I'll pull up the guy's name. It's very relevant, very interesting. He says, look guys, <clears throat> I know it's bad for business, right? It's bad for the content in your community. But it always struck me uh, as unfortunate, the number of people who are d getting into the whiskey scene and they're directing others, mm -hmm. but they start to get very bored with lower proof, right. smoother whiskeys. They want it. the challenge. They want the journey. They want the adventure. I get it. And yeah, man, 
Anytime something seems like we shouldn't do it because it's not good for us, I'm gonna do the f out of that. Yeah. That's what's what spawned like the Coke and uh, whiskey pairing episode. Right. I'm all up in it. We're gonna do that. Because like that idea. if our goal is to help people find the whiskey that they like, we shouldn't shy away from the fact that things that we find a little tame right. could be the most amazing whiskey in the world for a tremendous number of people. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Uh, between the two. Still of the 12. The 12? Comparatively. Yeah. And I would be reaching for the 12 maybe as a go to beginner. Yeah. Whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. Right up there. And honestly, I'm, I'm probably liking this more than I'm letting on. I would be reaching for this probably alongside like a Glenfiddich. Or a monkey shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Like a monkey shoulder. It's right up there in terms of mm. niceness. I don't know in terms of budget. Do we have any idea? Andrew Gonos. For next year's April, Fru <laughs> April Fool's Day episode, you should just do a whiskey you've already reviewed and not say a word. Just stand there sipping whiskey, ending with the review with a thumbs up or down, like Joaquin Phoenix scene from Gladiator. I love. I kind of like that idea. Right. We're all we, we just stand in silence for the full length of a normal video. Right. Sipping. Right. And then thumbs down and move to a different whiskey, <laughs> and we just don't speak for twelve minutes. Yeah. Do you do you realize you do have an inordinate number of ideas that involve? You not saying anything. Welcome to introvert heaven. Uh, 25 bucks, you could get that doer's 12. No kidding. Yeah. Oh, wow. Right? I think, yeah, for 25 bucks, no, that's punching above its weight. Mm hmm. I totally agree. Yeah, I dig that actually. A lot more than $25 worth. Sergeant Fury, as a Viking descendant, yeah. I'm offended. Now, hold on. I haven't even read that. That was back when we did Vaulting at Highland Park. I haven't even read the rest of the <laughs> comment yet. Are Viking, Vikings allowed to be offended? offended? I don't think they can. That's not a very, that's a very un-Viking thing to do. Yeah. Right? But I don't want to travel far from my boat, so not much I can do. <laughs> we did have, <laughs> here's what's funny. We had half a dozen people go, hey, I'm Viking, right. but I can't be bothered. <laughs> that was the short. <laughs> oh, good. That's, that was the. That's what I expect from a Viking. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, you, go. Oh, yeah, well, ah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh. All right, yours 12. Damn, handling it. You know, surprisingly uh, nicely balanced, and you got some richness to the flavors. There's, that's got to be more than. F that's a forty percent. Yeah, that tastes more uh, interesting and and. Um, I'd say 43, 46. I would. Yeah, I would say I forty-three, guessed. forty-five. Yeah. Good on you. All right. Viewers, twelve. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal me, you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink. May you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.